Yo, what's up, YouTube? It's Gabriel, just another fan TV. Back at you another video. Hey, look, if you like the content of my videos, go ahead and hit that like button. If you like the content of this channel, go ahead and subscribe, man. So, uh, Jeremy Fowler, ESPN writer, um, did a poll of about 50 people. We're talking about scouts, coaches, executives from all around the NFL. And to get a top 10 list at about 11 different positions in the NFL. And one of those positions he had a top 10 list for was cornerback. Now, the Ravens, we know we have multiple, uh, multiple talented cornerbacks on this team. But the guy who will probably rank on this list is Marlon Humphrey, right? Obviously. So let's take a look at the top 10 list and see where Marlon Humphrey came into play. 10, Trayvon Diggs. 9, A.J. Terrell. And number 8, I got Marlon Humphrey. 7, Pat Sertain. Uh, 6, Denzel Ward. 5, J.C. Jackson. 4, Xavier Howard. 3, Jair Alexander. Two, uh, Marshawn Lattimore, and number one, Jalen Ramsey, to no, to nobody's surprise there. I would say this top five is pretty rock solid. These are guys who are elite players at their position, guys who have been doing it for multiple years, and if you were to say that these were your top five corners in the league, I really wouldn't have too much argument with you, right? Um, I look at six and seven, Sertain and Denzel Ward, and feel like Marlon Humphrey could be ranked above both of those guys. In my opinion, Sertain, he's only done it one year. Obviously, he comes from, you know, Ample Pedigree with his dad, Pastor Sertain Sr., playing for the Dolphins. So he's been training for this moment pretty much probably his whole life. Now, he's a very talented corner, had a pick six last year. I think he had about four picks overall last year. So he had a really good season, but he's only done it for one year, in my opinion. So I think Marlon Humphrey is a better corner right now than Pastor Sertain. And Denzel Ward, Denzel Ward also had a pick six last year. I believe he had like a 100-yard return versus the uh, Bengals, and I believe, in Cincinnati as well. So he's a good player, fast player. I think one probably one of the fastest players in the league, you know, probably wants like a, a low 4-3 kind of guy, you know. He can go. But I think Marlon Humphrey's a better player than him too. Inside, outside versatility, better tackler, uh, more physical. Uh, Denzel Ward has his strengths, but I think Marlon Humphrey gives the defense more flexibility, more versatility. So I think Marlon can easily slide in at number six on this list, uh, but that's just my opinion. So let's look at what Marlon Humphrey actually did last year, right? So 12 games, 58 tackles, one interception, 13 deflections, uh, one forced fumble. Now, remember, I said only 12 games. So in those 12 games, he had 13 pass deflections, which ranked him in the top 15 in the NFL. So he was on his way to having a top 10 or higher season in pass deflections if he probably plays the last five games of the year. But, you know, he tore his pack, everything like that, and was forced to miss the rest of the season. Um, now, only allowed 53% completion percentage. Uh, I believe the best in his career. Now, we got to get to the bad a little bit. Over 600 yards allowed um, during last season in 12 games. Now, that's, that's one of the higher marks in his career. Now, I'm going to put a small asterisk on that 600 yards just because Jamar Chase probably accounted for a lot of those yards when he went over 200 yards versus the Ravens. And um, Jamar Chase did that to a lot of folks last year. So I'm going to put a small asterisk on that just because Jamar Chase probably takes up a large chunk of that, that, that 600 yards, okay? Um, now, for Marlon Humphrey, right, for this year, what do I want to see for Marlon, right? Uh, Marlon is a extremely talented corner, gifted corner. In 2019, he was able to force eight fumbles. You just don't hear cornerbacks forcing eight fumbles. Now, last year, he forced one fumble, as I mentioned earlier. I think that we, not I think, I know we need Marlon Humphrey to get back to making and creating turnovers, whether it's intercepting the ball, whether that's forcing fumbles. Now, the thing that I, I need Marlon to be careful of is this, okay? Like I said, get to that forcing fumbles, but that also causes him to miss tackles. Now, he gave up, I believe, almost close to 300 yards um, after the catch. And, that's, and I can guarantee you that's because he was trying to force a fumble, and the guy kept gaining yards and gaining yards. The Ravens, as a, as a team last year, had an issue of missing tackles, leading to big plays. Bring up Jamar Chase again. He he caught a, what, a 10-yard uh, curl or in route, took it to the crib because he, what, he missed two, three tackles on that play. Think of Darnell Mooney, Chicago Bears. He caught a pass that was probably, I think, maybe 20 yards down the field. We missed two, three tackles on that play. Touchdown. So the Ravens had a, a big issue last year where Missed tackles made plays that was going to be um, slightly damaging into excruciating because they, they gave up touchdowns on those kind of plays. So they have to find a balance of and do the most fundamental thing you got to do on defense, which is tackle the offensive player and bring them to the ground. 
They got to they gotta get back to the fundamentals and do that at a high level. Now, Marlon Humphrey, I think, is a good tackler, but he can get too focused on trying to strip the ball, and that can lead to guys, hey, a five-yard gain is now 15 yards because you're trying to strip the ball, and he's just carrying you for it. Now, I know it sounds contradictory when I say that, but we need Marlon Humphrey to create turnovers, but we also need him to be careful. I know it's hard, but it's a delicate balance. He's a top 10 corner in the league, according to the scouts, and I believe that. So he has to find that balance of bringing a guy to the ground while still be able to force those fumbles like he did. You know, he forced fumbles at such a high level. Obviously, he had named Fruit Punch from doing it. And we need to get back to that kind of guy. Because if he's not going to catch a high, a high amount of interceptions, I think that forcing fumbles is the way that he contributes to creating turnovers. Now, I do want to see him get his hands on the ball as far as interceptions as well. 13 pass deflections, top 15 in pass deflections, but only playing 12 weeks is very impressive. Um, so now, can you take those pass deflections, and instead of it being deflections, can they be interceptions, right? Obviously, not all of them. That's not realistic. But can we turn, you know, three or four of those into interceptions? If Marlon Humphrey was to end the year, right, with three, four interceptions, that's a good year for him. He's not a big interception guy. So I would say three to five. So we'll, we'll, we'll or expand it to five. Three to five interceptions. Lovely year for Marlon Humphrey. And you add in another five forced fumbles. I know it's asking a lot, but I believe he's an elite player and he can do that kind of thing. Especially with, I think the Ravens had the flexibility to move Marlon Humphrey around even more this year. We're signing a guy like Kyle Fuller, who can play inside, outside, like Marlon Humphrey can. Marlon can now take some snaps in, slot, in, in that slot position and get closer to the ball and make more plays on the ball, which where he, where he was at his best in 2019. Okay. Um, you know, watching the game, you kind of thought that Marlon didn't have that good of a year. But when I was looking at the numbers. I was kind of surprised that he actually had a pretty good season. Honestly, he really did. I think it's because the defense was down overall. The team was down because of all the injuries. It seemed like Marlon Humphrey had a worse year than he actually did. Now, can he be better than last year? Absolutely. I'm not saying he had his best year or even close to maybe even his second best year. He can absolutely be better. Um, but I don't think it was bad as maybe I, I had originally thought. So Marlon is a guy where... He is one of the leaders on this team, one of the leaders on this defense. He is one of probably the only guys who's going to be ranked as a top 10 player at his position right now. I would think Marlon Humphrey, obviously, they got him at, at number eight on this list. And probably um, Marcus Williams will be ranked as a top 10 safety at his position. Everybody else, while good players, are not going to be ranked in the top 10 at their position. Okay, let's, let's just be honest. And so the Ravens have two top 10 players, I believe, at their positions. And now what the Ravens have to do is just get the guys to the ground, tackle, um, but still be able to cause turnovers. And I know it's a delicate balance, but the Ravens are an elite defense, I believe. I think they have an elite defense on their hands, and they have enough time to play on their roster where they can find that balance and actually execute the plays. So when I saw Mount Humphrey break the number eight, I was like, that's good. I think a couple of guys above him shouldn't be there, but we have a top 10 corner, we have a talented corner, and we have a guy who I think is going to have a huge, huge year and get back to what he does best. So uh, I want to drop this video talking about Marlon Humphrey. I think when I think when we get the behind the scenes looks of what coaches, scouts, executives thinks about these players around the league, it's something interesting to talk about. So it's your boy Gabriel, just another fan TV. I'm out.